Hey everyone, welcome to part two of the solar uh, panel system that I'm putting together, this 200 watt system uh, for the cabin. I'm testing, kind of in the process this week of finishing uh, the uh, testing of it. So uh, the first part you saw me check the panels uh, to the charger to the batteries. So I'm making sure that those panels are actually charging up those batteries. Even though we had just a little bit of sun, I could tell that it was working. So now what we have to do is test you know, there's obviously uh, later on in the evening here, and so there's no light to, to test the whole system, but I know that part of the system works. Um, I did have to buy a couple of things like an inline fuse for the panel, for the solar panels. I put one on the positive side. It's recommended to put, um, I think, a 10 amp fuse from Renogy. So um, I got one of those. It'll snap in there, no problem. It'll go right into the cable. It'll be really easy. I just put it in there. So if there's any shorts from the, uh, panel side down to the charger it should you know it should pop the fuse little 10 amp 10 amp fuse not a big deal and then um, i also picked up a 20 amp fuse i mistakenly bought a 40 amp fuse because i thought i thought i bought the 40 amp charger but i got a 20 amp charger really need a 20 amp fuse um, i'll just save that other one just in case something pops and i have to use something but i, I ended up getting another 20 amp inline fuse um, for the charger side so if that circuit fails um, that'll pop uh, won't hopefully won't destroy the charger if something shorts out there I also had to pick up a 150 amp fuse for the inverter side so I'm gonna show you that in a minute because I have that hooked up so what I'm gonna do right now is test out the system from the battery bank I have both batteries hooked up now um, all the way to the inverter I'm gonna test that system just to make sure everything is working on that end um, so I'll show you what I've got going here. I didn't I'm, I didn't film every bit of you know me putting you know uh, everything together. I'll show you how it's done. It's really really pretty simple so far. Um, again with this system, it's the whole point is to make it as basic as possible. So if I need to service it or change something, it's not a big deal. It doesn't get real complicated. I don't know a whole lot about this stuff, so for me it's just learning. Um, but in theory, I could take these batteries back home. I could move them to a safer spot. I could take the panels down. Um, you know, if it's looking good and it's looking like I can get a, I can get a good permanent mount uh, up there situation, then maybe I'll leave them. Um, but in reality, I could just bring them back for the winter so they don't freeze. And you know, you don't want that to happen with these batteries. So um, I'll leave the inverter and some of the other stuff up there, no big deal. I'll have that bolted to the wall. Um, but let me show you what I got right now. And it's kind of cool. I'll, I'll kind of go through uh, the process of setting it up and you know I'm sure you guys have some opinions and feedback on how what I did right right or wrong that you know let me know in the comments um, hey uh, guys if you like this stuff it really means a lot uh, if you hit that like subscribe follow button tell your friends uh, you know your family members whatever but um, it means a lot to us you know obviously we're trying to grow the channel as much as we can and we're trying to you know commit to this uh, once a week video um, this series is gonna be fun so um, go ahead and do that if you can uh, if you want to so I'm gonna go over this system right now and I'll show you from the battery bank forward check this out it's kind of cool okay so here are the two Renogy 100 amp batteries as you can see here I have them out of the boxes these are gel cells <clears throat> they're uh, sealed they have a valve in them that will, you know, will pop off if they get, you know, overheated or some malfunction happens. So, you know, theoretically, I think you can use these fairly safely indoors. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put a little. Uh, for the time being, I'm probably just going to stick them outside when I'm up there. But if I if I get the time, I'm going to build a a small, you know, plywood box with with some plastic on the bottom, um, and some insulation around them just to keep them, you know, somewhat insulated. <laughs> And, uh, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep them outside. I, I don't really have any interest in putting this stuff inside, um, just to be sa you know, a little bit safer. So, um, pretty simple solution. So I'm running these things in parallel, meaning I'm getting a 12 volt system out of this. My inverter that I bought is 12 volts. So I have to, I can't do the series thing where you jump them back and forth. So it's really simple, black to black red to red uh, you'll see right here I have this little jumper wire here it's black it's just because of the kit that I bought I couldn't find I couldn't specify they give you a red and a black each time so um, that's gonna be the only confusing thing but honestly it's not that big a deal so I ran red to red there and then from there the, the black the black cable just goes here and this is 4-0 wire so pretty thick I got this on Amazon and it's actually really good stuff it's really uh, 
sorry, we're still sniffling a little bit getting over this thing, but um, it's really soft stuff. It's nice cable. It would be really good for, you know, making like uh, alternator, you know, cable for your car or something like that. Really thick stuff and really uh, soft and, and movable. Um, hopefully it holds up. We'll, you know, time will tell about that. But so from there, uh, black cable, really straightforward. What this does is it goes all the way over here. I have five feet of it goes right into the inverter no no problem straight in right so straight from the battery I'll show you straight into the inverter and by the way there's my Ames inverter I showed that to you earlier 1200 watt 20 2400 watt surge Ames power inverter 12 volt variety um, and then what I did here on this side I'll kind of go through it again red to red and then I had this jumper that goes over here to this 150 amp inline fuse some off-brand thing it's the only thing I could really find I, I was going back and forth on getting a breaker because it can double as a switch but in reality I wanted this thing as close to the battery bank as possible because there's not a lot that can go too wrong with this stuff in my mind but you know this this length of cable you know if I short something out over here which is you know it's a real possibility I mean if something gets unplugged over here and you know those are pretty close together so I'm definitely gonna be figure out a way to secure that down but you know they could bump into each other and short it out so if you have this protected you know on a breaker uh, you know something could happen up here and you could have a problem so I put the I'm gonna be putting the breaker as close to the battery bank as possible again if you guys think this is not a good idea or I should put it on this end of the cable or whatever that you know it I can do it either way uh, it doesn't really matter of course now that I cut the wire no it, it doesn't matter I could switch it around so so 150 amp fuse to protect the uh, to protect the, from shorts basically and protect this guy right here. So uh, then what we have from there, red side, positive side, into a really beefy switch. Now people say that the the lugs on this are three eighths. These but the cable I have is five sixteenths. So it did require a little bit of drilling out. N you know, not a lot, just a little bit. Still plenty of room in there that they're they're pretty similar size cable so <clears throat> so I did that but those lugs are beefy and so I have it off right now but I thought it'd be nice to have a kill switch just in case I needed to like really quickly do some maintenance on this thing so I'm gonna I'm gonna mount this like you know like right next to this inverter wherever this ends up it'll this will be right next to it so I have kind of a master kill switch right there um, I suppose I could put that over on the other side as well, but you know, for me, it's just like, hey, you know, I can kill the power real quick, and it's really close, as close as you could possibly be to this inverter. So that made sense to me. For now, again, subject change, whatever. Um, but and then what I did is I sort of jerry-rigged a uh, just to test this out. You see, because remember, this is a wired unit, so this is going to go into uh, right into the, uh, the 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 cabin wiring. The, the power panel and so I had to kind of like jerry rig up something just to test it with so I found this like five dollar uh, you know power strip you know Fred Meyer so just cut the end off and and I direct wired it in there so I can test the system <clears throat> and then I can plug an appliance I have a I have a work light in here that I'm testing out 25 watts here no big deal um, I didn't bother putting on this panel you know what's gonna happen is you run your your conduit and then you put it through here and you and then I have my AC input uh, which was where the generator is going to go into instead of going into the panel it'll go into this and then flow through so I'll take use of both of those little spots one thing I don't like about this thing so far and it's it's I, I don't know if it's gonna be a, a problem yet there's not a lot of room in there for these wire nuts so I'm gonna have to find some like really small wire nuts because there's you know, there's not a lot of clearance in there, so it's not ideal. Um, I I don't really know what to do, but these things make it really kind of, when you put that on there, there's no room in there. So I kind of wish that they made that just a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit deeper. It just, I don't know, I don't know, that just doesn't seem right. It seems pretty thin and pretty light. So I'm sure I can stuff them in there if I get those really small, you know, the really small kind. These are a little bit bigger. Uh, I think I can get away with a little bit smaller size, so hopefully that works. But these right here fit in pretty tight, 
you know, on the lugs. Like you got to make sure those are in good and tight. Um, but it fits pretty good. This 4.0 wire, and they recommend, you know, Ames recommends using 4.0 or even 2.0 uh, wire for this. So it should accommodate 2.0. But man, this is really tight in there. So um, you can't get much bigger than that, guys. So that that seems to be pretty good. I'm, I went with 4.0. On the whole system, I think this is 4.0. Yeah, that's what I did. Was it four or two? Maybe I did go two. I'll confirm that in the notes there, but I, I'm pretty sure I went four with all this. Um, I was kind of going back and forth, but the run isn't, you know, it's only five feet, so it's not a big deal. <clears throat> if you run like 15 feet or more, they said you gotta, it's best to go up, up a size. So let's test this thing out and see if it works. Uh, quick video, uh, you know, just kind of, just slowly making sure, you know, in the evenings here that I'm doing what I can to, to just to mitigate any problems by testing it as much as I can. Uh, and so far, let's let's uh, let's see what we get. So let's let's fire it up. Power to the cable here. Let's turn the master switch on. Okay, so there's that, and then this has a switch on it too that you can turn on. So I'm going to turn that on, and that switch is over here, right here. You just push this and you can buy a remote switch and plug it in there and you can mount that wherever you want in the cabin or your RV you turn that on now that's on so people have noted that these do make some noise slightly unpleasant that's true um, and I was expecting that so I'm not real surprised uh, I don't know if that noise is normal I might call the company um, but it seems to be working fine. I don't think it's the fan. The fans actually sound pretty quiet. I'm just wondering if that's like a transformer noise. So I might write them and see if that's normal. If there's kind of a buzzing, a buzzing noise. Or I can't really tell if it's the, it does get a little bit better as, as it warms up and kind of starts moving. So. You know, maybe it'll maybe it'll get kind of maybe it is those bearings and these little fan. I think they're just computer fan motors. They're probably pretty common, um, but it does buzz. It does buzz a little bit, and so I don't know, you know, if that's normal. But here's the deal. So now look at what we got here. We got power going here. No big deal. Awesome. Let's turn this on. See if it's working. All right. Let's check it out. The little system's working. Uh, the other thing I might do is put this, not right now, I don't have the time to do it, but I may end up building a little, you know, a little shelving unit, micro sort of shed on the outside of the cabin where I just, instead of taking this thing and putting it on the inside, I'll just put it on the, directly on the outside of the cabin, right, you know, kind of in the same spot. That should be fine. Um, and then I wouldn't hear it really at all. It'd just be outside, insulated away from the, the uh, you know, the inside of the cabin. So I may end up doing that at a later date. But see, it's starting to kind of quiet down a little bit. Fans are spooling up just a little bit. It's got to cool everything. So it's not too bad. But what I'm thinking is, I'm going to run like an emergency light. <clears throat> I think there's a load center, uh, a load. Uh, area on that charger that I have that I can run a direct 12 volt line off of. And so what I might end up doing is just running a little 12 volt light just for emergency use at, you know, at night and then just shut this thing off. Cause I don't really want that running all night anyway. It's just cause it draws power. And so there's no need to really keep that on, keep that on at night unless you're using power, turning lights on, but it's super easy to turn on and off and just go turn it on, you know, and then you got power. So. Um, at night, I just shut the thing off and keep it quiet anyways, but it's not too bad. It, it is, it does make some noise. So, um, but Hey, for it's, you know, it's under $200 for that thing. And it's still, I think a pretty good value. If it does seem, if it does show that it, you know, if it does end up holding up, you know, over time, then that's a good value. If it fails right away, well, okay. But apparently Ames has a pretty darn good reputation for customer service. So we may have to put that to the test. I don't know. But that is the system. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, guys. Uh, power from the battery over to the inverter, over to the power strip, powering that light. 
and that's 25 watts so this goes up to 1200 should have plenty of power for that little cabin just a few lights and uh, that should last for you know several hours or whatever but um, yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how long you know how long these batteries last you know can we actually make use of that stuff at night and do they charge up in the day that's that's my biggest curiosity so the other thing I picked up uh, in case you're curious is well, here's that inline here's that inline fuse for the um, for the panels 10 10 amp I also picked up 20 f more feet of uh, solar panel cable just in case I need it because I realize there's a lot of you know, loss over over length but this is a 12 a 24 volt uh, system so it shouldn't be too much loss and I may just need this for the length I may need to put these on the other side of the cabin where there's a lot of Sun and you know if it's looking like it's not charging up okay I'll have to figure out a different plan but you know for now I, I'm gonna give it a shot and see uh, what this does for us because this gives us a lot of uh, capability to put this put these panels up high and we wherever we need them but the reality is that the wrong the longest run of cable you're going to need for the system is those pa those panel cables over to the uh, you know the charge controller so you know I figured just make them as long as we can and get them out get them get them where we need to put the you know get the most sun and then everything else I'm keeping really tight, you know, like within four or five feet of each other. So it should be pretty solid little system. Um, but that'll give us a little bit more capability to put those panels up high. And if we get them up high and mounted good, I'll just leave them up there, no big deal. And uh, that should be pretty cool. So that is where we are at right now. I'm trying to think of, I think we're really pretty much good to go at this point as far as this little system. Um, uh, maybe I'll fabricate up something for this for this uh, these batteries over over the weekend. But we don't have a whole lot of room. We're gonna we're not gonna bring the trailer. We're just gonna put these in the in the car and bring them up. So I don't have a whole lot of room to carry extra things. Um, I could use I could like modify that old crate and fit them in there. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet with that. But <clears throat> uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'll have time to build next week. So. That's where we are at. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty exciting to me. I mean, it seems simple, but it's pretty cool. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, pretty simple. Just want to show you the, the process of it. Obviously, the exciting stuff's gonna be, you know, when we start putting this in the cabin. That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, I don't have everything worked out in my mind. Again, the battery box that I'm gonna build or buy or, or you know, do I maybe I've heard of some people just putting them in simple uh, plastic coolers and that's insulation and then just vent, venting it a little bit. Um, don't know what I'm gonna do yet with that. Um, I may end up just sitting them outside and putting them on a piece of plywood for the time being, and then um, you know once I get there, figure out kind of what I need. They do need to be you know waterproof and all that and vented the correct way. So um, yeah, there's some there's some open-ended things I don't quite yet uh, know what I'm gonna do, but. I'm pretty excited. This is pretty. This is pretty cool so far. Um, everything so far looks like it's working. The inverter's still clicking away here, still buzzing a, a bit. You know, it's a little noisy. That's not exactly awesome, but you know, hey, it's a cheaper one and uh, it should be fine. I think it'll work for our purposes. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, follow on, along with the series. Obviously, I'm. I can't wait to get it put in the cabin. That's the real exciting thing for me, but. Um, I'm learning as I go, kind of setting things up, and it's helping me sort of understand the system um, as simple as it is. I really, I've never done this before, so I'm just like learning as I go. So, hope you guys enjoy the series. Um, I will talk to you on the next one. I'll see you later, guys.